look at this. So it's like, it's kind of variegated. That is very unique. You guys are the only ones that have that. Only ones that have it. That is amazing. Look at that. Look at those ones in there. Like, they're just... This Beautiful ornamental. Now, have you guys seen what the fruits on these look like yet? Uh, just like the miniola on the variegated. On the variegated, so it's striped just like that. Except not as, not as variegated. Not as stripey. And I've only had one fruit. One fruit? I'm hoping this next year I'll have more fruit. <laughs> now the variegated ones are yellow with red stripes. Was that red with yellow stripes? I didn't let it get ripe. Somebody picked it. Really? I don't know. Oh, that's cool. Oh man. It was gone. And they probably didn't <coughs> enjoy it. <laughs> this is just endless. I love it. <coughs> you got miles of citrus trees. You don't even notice it's oh yeah it's almost hard to tell it's all hard to tell when it as the growth ages when it grows out younger here, here, it's here. very mottled. I think it's pretty down there oh yeah so you said the the new growth is really mottled yeah, look at look at this one over here you can see a little, a little more oh yeah mottled on it it's like it wants to be variegated that is unique. Now, does this stay this way? I know that sometimes yeah. you said that it will work its way out. But, uh, eventually, it will grow a variegated limb, as on the other side. Huh. Look at that. So you've got the model tree, and then this branch right here turned out to be variegated. And would, would that be a sport branch? That's just that's a limb sport. That's a limb sport. Gosh, citrus is so crazy that it does that. Put out a completely totally different variety on a branch okay, and if you want to see something that nobody else has ever saw follow me please this tree is a typical bingo a bingo it's not released dooryard <gasps> oh my gosh that's like a mix between the modeled and the variegated but it is variegated yeah look at that oh yeah this one here is a little bit more variegated than that one this is that's that's amazing but it will probably never be released public really probably not well it's it's because it's patented right that's correct it's patented now would this be considered to be enough to be a different variety no no it would have this it, it goes back to the purpose the person that bred it and propagated it and it has the patent anything that comes from that plant is still proprietary i see that's amazing that's amazing huh now uh, that you just had one that was like that this right? is the only one that mutated 
That's amazing. You got some of the rarest citrus, Herschel. One of a kind. <laughs> Hopefully we can release it. I've already referred it back to the state of Florida, back to the originator of it, and asked for permission to release it. But it has to go through all the lawyers and all the law and find out what you can do because I'm, I'm, I'm doing it the correct way. Sure. Uh, they bred it. I want them to be able to get the rights to it. And that's the, the variegated bingo. Keep an eye out for that in the in the future. <laughs> Hopefully. Wow, that's amazing. Do you got any other weird ones like that? That that you've yeah, care you care to thing. share? One um, cool thing with these over here though, the, the variegations are different between the carrot carrot and the calamond and the coloring's different. We have the variegated blood orange up at the farm. Okay. Um, a variegated blood orange. Variegated blood orange. It is in um, California in rehab. They're cleaning it up for me. Yeah. Um, it's, last I heard it was actually in therapy. It means within three more flushes, it will be released back to me. As a variety you can sell? As a variety I can sell. Oh my gosh. A variegated blood orange. Yep. Let's see the difference between them. So this one's the variegated calamondin. Oh wow, look at that little guy. The fruit up here really pretty. Oh yeah, they got more stripes on it. But it's just the carrot carrot versus the calamondin. You can see more yellowing in the, those front pots. See how they're more white in the back pots on Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So those are the variegated calamondin, and then that's the variegated carrot carrot. You're right. It's got more white in it. It's like white, and then there's yellow. That's cool, the differences. In wow. It smells amazing. Huh. Cara Cara and Mineola were always some of my favorite oranges. Store bought, anyways. You know, if you're going to get some stuff from the store, you know. At least they got flavor. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. This is the 812. 812 grafted rootstock. Oh, wow. And then these are three gallon pots. Huh. Now, 812, is that a citrandron? I'm trying to remember. I'm not sure. It's the only one that some varieties, like uh, U.S. Saperna, uh -huh. will actually produce fruit on. It really? There's a little bit of fruit on other varieties of rootstock, but for it to be productive, it has to be grafted to 812. 812. I know 802 is a, a citramello. I'm thinking this is probably a citrandron. Oh, yep. Lou just told me it is a citrandron. Look at there's a it's almost it's like it's got bifoliate leaves a little bit. Like right here's a little bifoliate leaf. It has a thumb. Yeah. <laughs> like a little like a little uh winter uh mitten. And that's eight one two. Citrandrin. Gosh, I'm curious what the fruits on these would taste like. Uh, Lion Dragon. Awesome. Awesome. <coughs> now that's 812 grafted onto 812? I'm not sure what it's grafted onto. <coughs> well, it's not grafted at 812. It's grafted for whatever we had available at the time. Uh, it's uh, 639. Six, six nope. You got two amazing, <laughs> two amazing <laughs> varieties on there right there. Oh my gosh. I would, <laughs> that's awesome. I would, if I had suckers, like little rootstock, I might let a couple branches grow. And you got a uh, rootstock cocktail tree. Yeah, a trifolia cocktail. <laughs> wow. And these are flying dragon. And they're grafted to Carrizo. So that they will grow faster uh, but the reason it is grafted is because it's one of the most contorted um, of the flying dragon that has ever been found so this specific variety of flying dragon is yes. the is the most crazy looking crazy swirly little vines and wow 
I saw one of these that was really, really, really big at the Knoxville Zoo in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it looked really cool. A big old flying dragon There's full of flowers. Huge one in my yard over there that up until a few year to, years ago was the most photographed plant in my yard. Yeah. Everybody wanted a picture beside the flying dragon. They look, they, when they get big, they look really cool. That's crazy. Very cold hardy. Now, what, you were saying that they found out that flying dragon isn't as cold hardy as other trifoliates. Not using it as a rootstock. As a rootstock. The, the scion still gets killed on it. I see. And here's, here's the problem that I always said with the flying dragon as a rootstock. If the scion does get damaged, it recovers so slow. When you put it on 942 or something more aggressive, or even 802 or X639, yeah, it gets damaged, but it recovers extremely fast. So, you know, if I'll have a grove and my trees get winter damage, I want them recovered by the following year. I know I'm not going to have much fruit that year. The following year, I want them recovered where I can be back in production. Flying Dragon, it could take years if they recover. Wow. I see. It's slow growing and it transfers onto the Scion. Yes. Now, back years ago when I was in the original Citrus Growers Forum, I grafted a, a Flying Dragon onto a Carrizo and I grafted one onto a Swingle and made it extremely fast growing. And I was making fun of myself on the forum and one of the doctors in France saw me making fun of myself and scolded me for making fun of it and said that's how most really neat things ever are found out is people doing experiments. So that's why it doesn't bother me anymore to do crazy stuff like this because <laughs> I realize, you know, um, somebody has to figure it out somewhere down the line. Yeah. So I might as well be the one. So you were grafting Carrizo onto Flying Dragon. And then I was grafting Flying Dragon onto Carrizo to see <laughs> what the differences were. Yeah. And the Carrizo was pushing the Flying Dragon, and I was using a Trifoliate also that was a really slow growing one back then. I can't remember which one I was using, but it was a really slow grower. So I would graft it onto Swingle to produce more fruit, bigger fruit, more seed. Wow. So I was a mad scientist uh, 40 years ago. That's amazing. I was just mad most of the time. So. <laughs> Wow. Now, this was something that you figured out then, was back then, was grafting Flying Dragon on a Carrizo gives you a nice big tree, and then it doesn't stay as small and dwarfed and contorted by doing that, right? Well, it's, it's supposed to stay as contorted. It just grows faster. I see. And we actually put it on Carrizo, and we're going to root cuttings and grew it up, and then I realized that uh, Flying Dragon cuttings don't root very well. So it almost has to be grown from seed or grafted. So eventually we'll offer this one as a grafted tree. 